So let's have a look first starting with the labella, forehead and crow's feet. In Ash's case we're just softening lines that will improve rather rapidly because he's young. So within a couple of weeks, these tiny lines here will completely fade. So we're still at a good time where these, these will continue to do that. Quite easy to predict. If you need to check more, you can kind of pull, pull the lines apart and see how well they improve. I know that forehead lines, even though they don't always improve from separating the line out, they often come out much better with time. And I think it's because one of the few lines where gravity actually pulls the line out while you're not using the muscle. Crow's feet, very, very tiny lines. They'll improve, they're lighter than the forehead lines. And then labella is just more about not having that negative expression that causes that little crease here, which you can see forming. We're gonna stop that. So we start with the labella, which is the easiest place, I think, to treat because it's an isolated muscle. We can see the insertion point, we learn about the origin, and you can plan your treatment accordingly. So if you look angry for me first or cross, these little boomerang lines here, they tell you where the insertion point is of corrugator. So the corrugator inserts at this point to that point. That's where it's most active. I don't need to treat here because over here on the other side is frontalis. So some people, you can put a little boundary on here. You feel safer. Do the same on the other side and then relax. As you'll see, these are lateral to the mid papillary line. I don't need to go even as far as that line. It just helps me get my mind into gear about where that corrugator supercilli actually starts. So we'll start with an injection Usually I like to start with the bulk of the corrugator. So another big frown tells me where the bulk is. You can relax again. And I'll put one injection point just here on each side. Uh, the classic license dose is then you just put another injection here. I quite often like to separate them out because I want to get these little fibers more laterally. Three unit and a one unit. And then Procerus, if you do wrinkle your nose up like this one. Yeah, only a little Procerus. So this is strong corrugators, but a weak Procerus. We still obviously will treat it but you could probably put a lower dose here and maybe spend some of the additional uh, toxin here, maybe put a six unit dose, but because this is unlikely to ever cause a horizontal line on the nose, which is what Procerus normally does. Next one is the forehead. Now forehead in men, we don't typically want an eyebrow lift. It doesn't matter if it lifts a little bit, but typically you're not trying to create this sort of arch. Now that's not always true. So you always need to check, or you don't, do you want an eyebrow lift or no. pre like previously? Okay. so. The natural shape here is a relatively straight eyebrow that then tapers off. Fantastic, like existing shape. So I don't want to alter it. I just want to stabilize it. So if you raise your eyebrows up for me, I can see the slight M shape to that muscle and I can leave a margin here, which normally we use as uh, about two centimeters from the orbital rim, which is only over here. So one, two, effectively, if I was to draw on a safety margin, it would follow this slight curve here. If I inject right here, that's what might cause more of a sense of heaviness. So this is a little safety area where there's untreated frontalis. Now because of that, I, it's relatively straightforward now just to draw a line of treatments. Now I usually like to divide, if you divide the face in half, you can start with one right in the middle and then treat either side of that. I don't normally go right to the middle because there tends to be a, an aponeurosis here which doesn't have much muscle in it. And then just spread those injection points out evenly. So if we do four injection points, I'll tidy that up. Typical in men, if you forget to treat higher up as you leave this area here, which isn't particularly strong, they will come back two weeks later with a little patch of muscle that's still working and needs retreatment. So I can just see, because there's previous Botox been had, I can see there's muscle movement here, but no lines. If you raise up again, You'll see where the aponeurosis really is. There's no movement. And I can see a patch of muscle here that I'm nearly about to miss. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher up. So now effectively I have two lines of treatment. I could use a higher dose lower and a lower dose higher. And that should be, there's also plenty of muscle here to support the medial brow. So this doesn't drop. And there'll be very little movement afterwards. It's mainly gonna be still with a little bit of brow movement from where the frontalis is untreated. So orbicularis oculi, strongest superiorly. So this is helpful at the tail of the eyebrow. I'll do my strongest dose and then a, an intermediate dose and then a weaker dose lower down so that we still have cheek mobility. Start by treating the labella. Your first safety point is just to put some pressure where the orbital rim is. If you think about your anatomy, we're now effectively putting pressure right over the foramen and preventing the toxin from making its way through towards where the orbital membrane is and where it may make its way into the orbit. There are other things you can do to decrease the chance of this. For example, your angle of entry might be helpful. So an injection like this may be slightly less likely than an injection like this. Although I do do that type of injection, I have a lot of practice. When you start out, I would suggest 
always aiming parallel with the path of the muscle. So we're going all the way in. This is a deep injection. And then I'm going to do two units, two units. Maintain the pressure. The little bolus is underneath where the dot is. You may notice I didn't actually go through the dot. That's to ensure we don't tattoo the skin. Do the same here. This is an intermediate depth. You should notice slightly less deep. Two, three units, and then one unit, most superficially. And do Preseris injection, midline pressure either side, and four units. It's the same again on the other side. Pointing medially underneath the dot, all the way in. Pressure within the orbital rim, four units. Lateral intermediate depth, three units. And most superficial, one unit. And when you first start out, it can be helpful to remove anything that you've injected just so that you don't confuse yourself and double inject. If you like injecting away from the eye, then ask your patient to look away from me. So if you look in that direction, and then I can inject it safely like this. This is a superficial injection, anything deeper, and I start to get close to the lacrimal gland or the lateral rectus muscle. So we're 1.5 centimeters away. These are technically the easiest injections because it's not that much anatomy going on. You've only got one muscle, tiny amount of dermis, hypodermis, fascia, muscle, reticular tissue, bone. <laughs>